Hey guys, John here from the Reaper blog. A week ago, I gave you some tips on working smarter in the DAW, just a couple suggestions for you to try. And I asked for more suggestions from the community. Um, so I'm going to read some of the comments you left and share them with everyone. The first comment I got was from AH Music. Rearranging your room has helped me a lot on my creative process. Sometimes I will just stand up and reorganize my setup. Working in a messy environment causes a lot of stress for me. I can't stand sitting at the computer and having stuff all over the desk, uh, including my control surfaces. They bother me on a daily basis because uh, if I'm not using them, it's just clutter. And if I move them out of the way, I'm going to be using them even less. I find a messy desk really distracts me and having even anything like in my peripheral vision uh, can distract me. There's already so many things on the screen that are distracting like Facebook. Gene of Mark says, use keyboard and mouse shortcuts often. Set ones that make sense to you. If there isn't a keyboard shortcut for the thing that you want, you can probably make it happen with custom actions and then setting keys for that. This is a great tip. And if you want to be fast at the DAW and not have to really think about stuff, you've got to get that muscle memory going. That comes from practice, repetition, and assigning shortcuts that make sense for you. Joseph Scalone says, I'm new to Reaper, but what has helped me so far is making my own folders for amp sims in one, EQs in another, compressors, etc. So he's talking about the effects browser and organizing his plugins into different groups. I have a video on using smart folders. So you just type in like compressor um, into the folder name and then it organizes your stuff automatically. Uh, and it does a pretty good job. That's definitely something that can save you a lot of time. Uh, if you know the plugin that you want, navigate to the folder for compressors. You can get it right there. Um, and also don't forget to use that filter box because that's super fast. Dan Gestaldi has a couple tips here. One, set the correct theme and layout for your screen slash workflow. A cool theme is okay, but a working theme is better. Yeah, and that is again like the clutter thing. Um, you know, having a fancy theme with like stuff that looks like a real mixer and all that, that can slow you down because the appearance of the theme can uh, detract from actual usability. He also mentions the PT Control app for iPad. Uh, it's not working 100%, but it can be helpful for singers that want to control their levels. Next tip was using effects chains to quickly hear if a take works or using snapshots for a complete project. Tip four is using the silhouette on the folder track to quickly check phase and timing issues. And I have a video on doing that using the faint outline on the folder and lining up tracks. Uh, that works so well. It was actually one of the reasons I switched to Reaper because it wasn't possible in other DAWs. CJ says, your tips are great. I would take the presets and templates tip to the next level. If it is possible, keep your interface connected and tweaked for your guitar and bass. So you just have to plug in your guitar and play. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. If you are always using the same setup, putting away all your gear every time can slow you down if you have an idea and you want to get it done quickly. So keeping an SM57 on your guitar cabinet, uh, all you have to do is turn on the preamp and basically hit record and, and Reaper and you're good to go. Mark Anderson says, every time that you try to learn a new technique, be it musical, technical, or whatever, try to turn it into a song. It doesn't matter if you never end up releasing the song for public consumption, but it can help the learning process feel less arbitrary. I must have a couple hundred short songs, less than a minute, recorded that I wrote exclusively to help myself learn. This tip is basically the opposite of what I suggested in my first tip. He's saying to learn something and put it into use right away. And I was saying, uh, when you get like a new plugin, don't force yourself to use it right away. Don't force yourself to write a song with it. But both things are right. And you know, the whole point of this is just to make music and learn your tools better and get from point A to point B faster without feeling frustrated. Rootberg says two things I use all the time. One, track templates for multi-out VSTs for send effects and for my favorite layered e-pianos. And two, shortcut for hiding the mixer, create a shortcut for showing hiding the media explorer. Again, use those shortcuts for all the things that you need all the time. George George says, one, do not overeat, two, sleep at night, three, organize your plugins and delete unused. Having a small number of tools that you know really well 
can get you results faster. Knowing them well means knowing their limitations and knowing when you actually need to upgrade. You know, you're always going to be tempted by the latest and greatest stuff, but like all you really need to mix a song is volume control, uh, EQ and compression, and you know maybe a reverb. Everything else is just like extras. Daniel White came in with 10 tips. Number one, watch the Reaper blog videos. Good idea. Number two, dedicate time to customizing Reaper to your needs. Mouse modifier shortcuts, shortcut, shortcuts. My favorite customized shortcut is using the star to record. And I think he means on the uh, number pad on a full size keyboard, the star. I think that's what Cubase uses for the default. But yeah, if you have a full size keyboard, that's definitely handy. I've gone through three or four Apple full-size keyboards. I keep getting water on them and they die. Uh, so I'm stuck with a little Bluetooth one for now. Three, sell your fancy and overpriced Waves plugins. That works for me. Number four, put your big sample libraries on an SSD. Yeah, using an SSD for your sample libraries is going to give you a big performance boost. Five, use multiple displays or high resolution displays and use screen sets. So oh, yes, of course, if you have the space for it, use multiple uh, screens, use the best monitor you can afford and use the screen sets to quickly toggle between different uh, layouts for each task that you're working on. Six, install SWS and fly over the action list. You'll find a lot of helpful features and actions. Seven, hide tracks you don't need. Eight, use MIDI controller or controller apps to get hands on. Nine, automatic record arm option. Yeah, there's this option when you select the track, it automatically record arms. And again, that's something that's very common for Cubase users. Um, I have a feeling that uh, Daniel came from Cubase originally. And 10, use the project bay to remove unused plugins or even bypass one specific plugin on all tracks. Farlin writes in, says, my tip is to see songwriting and arranging as one different thing from getting specific good sounds and mixing. Your ears maybe are like mine and can focus on either one or the other. To do songwriting, you have to let go of the rest. Use the trashiest drums and melodic stuff that is just good enough to make a sketch, then worry about mixing. You can't make something sound good if nothing good is really there. And that's something that I definitely struggle with I'll have an idea for a keyboard part, and as soon as I hit the keys, if it's not the right sound, then I kind of lose that idea. I spend a long time just looking for synth presets that work better, and I end up not really getting a lot recorded. This is one of the reasons why I suggested doing um, project templates, because you can have all of your favorite sounds in one place, and you just have to put in the notes. I got 10 tips from Alpen Music. One, organized song sections and regions for songwriting or final tracking. Two, organized plugin folders. Three, region playlist for improvising new ideas. I showed that region playlist in one of the early Q&A videos. Four is the save track templates for clean guitar, guitar crunch. We talked about this stuff already. Five, saved plugin presets. Six, saved effects chains for vocals and guitars and bass tracking. Seven, snapshot presets for the entire mix. Eight, master effects chain for different mixing and mastering session. Number nine, he changed his Reaper shortcuts. He uses one-handed shortcuts for the right side of the keyboard for tracking guitar and bass, and he uses two-handed shortcuts for mixing. Number 10 is using screen sets for tracking and mixing. Bear Fulmer says, I dig the SWS extensions. One of my favorite shortcuts I've started using is Control F making selected tracks a folder so much faster than clicking the icon and resizing the tracks to see them. Yep, great tip and definitely something that I use in my projects. Thanks for sharing your tips, everyone. It's uh, really great to see you guys interacting with each other in the comment section. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you liked it and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.